Welcome to the Self Girl Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Marie, a courage coach, creative soul, and adventure seeker. Since through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2019, I'm on a mission to help you embrace your most confident self so you can achieve your dreams too. If you're eager for deep conversations, big questions, and meaningful connections, join me on the quest to discovering how we can create a more magical and memorable life. Hello, nerds! How are you? I'm good. Today, I want to talk about relationships. Because I've seen so many of you struggle with thoughts like, my partner is not dynamic enough, my partner doesn't have enough motivation, my partner doesn't like hiking as much as I do, my partner doesn't want to travel as much as I do, and I want to make sure you regain your own power. So today I want to talk about how you outsource your well-being to your partner and what to do instead. Popular dating advice tells us to ask our partners for what we need. This sounds noble, but ultimately I believe it leads to frustration. You have probably been in a situation where your partner is either just not willing to meet a certain need that you have, or they just don't quite understand how, no matter how many times you've explained to them. Sometimes it's easy. You ask someone to do something with you or for you, and they go, no problem, that'll be a pleasure. But other times it's a lot more complicated than that, and you keep hitting the same wall. This was the case for me with my partner in the beginning. I wanted him to be more enthusiastic and impressed when I showed him my work, my illustration work, or my design projects. But he didn't. He would nod kind of nonchalantly, or or he would say like, oh, cool, and then keep doing whatever he was doing. There was a point at which I just wanted him to pretend, at least pretend, that he loved it, like a parent would in front of their kid's ugly drawing. I just couldn't stand how it made me feel, how his perceived indifference made me feel. And I thought to myself, I want, I want a partner who admires my work. It seems important to me. The other wall I kept running into with him was my desire for deep conversations. And a lot of my clients struggle with this as well. Obviously, if you're part of the self-growth nerds community, you like deep conversations as well. I pictured my partner and I sitting with like a milkshake, staring into each other's eyes, talking about the meaning of life. But every time I tried to recreate that movie scene, my partner looked at me like, do we really have to do this? I remember once uh, we were lying down cowboy camping by a lake and looking at the stars in silence. I told myself, ooh, this is the perfect moment to have a deep conversation. So I asked a question and waited for his answer. He just started singing a silly song and I was furious. (laughs) I turned my back to him and thought about how it was important to me to have a partner who values growth as much as I do and this was not working out and you know the spirals that this sends us into. (laughs) If I had not learned otherwise, I might have ended up leaving him to find someone else who ticked those boxes. Just to realize later down the road that number one, no partner ticks all of our boxes. And number two, meeting all of our emotional needs is not their job. Before we go any further, I want to make sure we differentiate emotional needs from practical needs which I will not be addressing in today's episode. Think of emotional needs as what would just make you feel better about yourself and in the relationship, and practical needs as things that just need to get done. Okay, here are some examples. So emotional needs might be being more enthusiastic. I need you to to be more enthusiastic, to have more energy, to be more motivated. Or I need you to want to have deep conversations with me. I need us to have open communication. I need us to um, to go to therapy. I need us to go on more adventures together. Versus practical needs might be, I need you to make dinner. I need you to empty the dishwasher. 
I need you to pick up the kids. Okay, see the difference? Now, expecting your partner to fulfill your emotional needs is risky because two reasons. First, your well-being can become dependent on their behavior. And number two, both people can learn to please the other but negate their truth in the process, which can often lead to resentment. Of course, we all do things we don't love to please our partners, and that can be beautiful. Like, my partner will sometimes watch movies he doesn't, wa- he doesn't give a rat's ass about with me because he knows how happy that's going to make me. Maybe your partner is going to want to go to therapy with you even if it's not something that's important to them. But this needs to come from a place of love, not compliance. You cannot make your partner go to therapy, for example, because even if you manage to persuade them to show up, their heart won't be there. And if they don't want to go, either to therapy or anything else that you would like them to do with you, then don't make it mean that they don't love you. This is an optional conclusion that you make that doesn't serve you in any way. It's not either or. It's not either you do this or you don't love me. So I'm going to share a three-step process to help you feel more at peace in your relationship. Okay, the step one is to be real honest about why you want your partner to meet a certain criteria. You can do that by asking yourself, what would be different for me if they did X, Y, and Z? I got three examples here for you. So first, if my partner was more enthusiastic about my work, it would make me feel more confident about what I do. Get real honest about what would happen for you if they did that. Example number two, if my partner was willing to have deep conversations, I would feel more connected to them. Whatever comes up for you, write it down. Step number two, notice what part of your well-being you are putting on their shoulders and see if you can find ways to take back the responsibility into your own hands. This is not to unload them, but to empower you. Okay, same examples. Number one, I am putting it on my partner's shoulders to compliment my work so that I can feel good. Now, how I can take back the responsibility in my own hands is learning to celebrate my work on my own, but also going to those friends that I know will give me the reassurance that I'm seeking. I have friends who love everything I do, no matter what it looks like. They're the people to go to when I need just to feel good about what I've done. If I want someone to put their finger on a detail like the shape of the nose is wrong in your drawing, then I know I can go to my partner for this. He's going to see things I hadn't seen that are going to help me improve the drawing. But I know him and I know he's he's not going to be my cheerleader. Being honest with myself about what I want and what he can give me is going to allow me not to waste time and get disappointed and go to the right people for the right thing, as well as learning to pat myself on the back. You know, if I need to show someone my drawing every 10 minutes in order to to be reassured, maybe it's a sign I need to, to learn to reassure myself. Example number two, those deep conversations. I can have them with my friends and seek connection with my partner in different ways that work for both of us. Step number three, from this place of awareness, of seeing how you're putting the responsibility of an aspect, an important aspect on your well-being into the hands of someone else, let go of what you think a relationship should be like and decide what you want for yourself. What can you do on your own? What are you happy learning to do on your own? And what is a non-negotiable for you? Because you could very well decide that having a partner who likes backpacking is a non-negotiable. You can. What you cannot do, though, is tell yourself that you cannot go hiking on the weekend because your partner doesn't like it. This is a lie that keeps you stuck. The truth is, you can go hiking and they might have feelings about it. 
The best case scenario is that they're glad to have a day for themselves. And the worst case scenario is they're upset about being on their own. If this happens, that's okay and nothing has gone wrong. Our partners are allowed to get upset and to have a different view. Now here's what to do in those situations. Number one, realize that you're not to blame. You cannot make someone upset. Their perspective about your decision is what makes them feel this way. Someone could have a different perspective and feel completely fine about it. So you cannot make someone upset. What you do cannot make someone upset. It's always what they think of what you do that makes them feel upset. So remove the blame from yourself there. There is no reason to blame yourself for choosing yourself. There is no reason to feel guilty for putting yourself first sometimes, for taking care of your well-being. So number two, once you've realized that, you can acknowledge their feeling and let them have it. We don't need to fix all feelings. Feelings aren't bad. So you can tell your partner, I know you're upset. I understand you love spending time together and you're going to miss me. I love spending time with you too and I'm going to miss you too. So acknowledge their feeling. It's valid. Without trying to make it disappear. Without trying to make them feel better. You're not their parent. And I mean, even parents, I believe, should let their kids have feelings. It's okay to be upset. Sometimes we don't need to rush to fix a feeling because we don't like the discomfort. Which brings me to step number three. Stand in your power and sit in the discomfort that this may create within you, within your partner, and even in the eyes of society. Like Couples should always be together. Couples should do things together on the weekends. There's a bunch of unspoken rules like this. So you can tell your partner, it's important for me to go hiking this weekend. I told you I was going to go hiking today, and that's what I'm going to do. I need this. You don't even need to justify. It's important to me. I'm going hiking. This is standing in your power and sitting in the discomfort. For your own good, you know what you need. And number four, where the magic happens, is discussing with them about how you can meet in the middle and still have space to be yourselves the two of you. So you can ask your partner, what could we plan soon that allows us to spend quality time together? Okay, so I'm going to summarize. Tell your partner, I know you're upset. I understand you want to spend time together. You love it when we're together. You're going to miss me. I love when we're together too. However, I'm going hiking this weekend. It's important to me. Now, Because I care about us, about spending time together, what could we plan soon that you and I both love that would allow us to spend quality time together? You might realize that you're not compatible, but at least you will have shown up fully as your true self and given the relationship a real chance to grow from a place of mutual freedom, honesty, and co-creation rather than compliance, emotional drama, and codependence. If you practice this, then your partner becomes a fun bonus in your life instead of a key ingredient to your well-being. And who knows, you might be surprised of how the other person shows up when they're not following a set of instructions and they feel free to be themselves. I know I was. I was surprised of how our relationship changed, but also of how good I felt within the relationship. How much more lighthearted I was when I decided to finally let go of those expectations that I had towards him and took ownership of what I need, looked for how I could fulfill those needs on my own or with other people. But this requires courage. The courage to take responsibility, to speak your truth, to set boundaries, courage to put yourself first, and sometimes the courage to leave. To help you develop that courage, I created Courage Camp. 
Courage Camp is a five-day event that's going to start on March 28th, where I'm going to coach you every single day of the week on how to overcome what's getting in the way of being who you most want to be in your relationship and doing what you most want to do in the rest of your life. We're going to laugh, to cry. We're going to get really deep into what it means for you to be your true self instead of fitting into a box that's been defined by society and makes you feel stuck and dependent on others to feel good, okay? So come experience the power of coaching for a week and see what happens and who you become. You can get your tickets at selfgrowthnerds.com slash courage camp. And I really hope to see you there and get the chance to help you step into the person that you're meant to be. All right. Have a beautiful week. Bye. You just listened to the self Growth Nerds podcast. Make sure to subscribe and to find me on Instagram at self Growth Nerds. If you want individual help developing the confidence to create a more meaningful and exciting life, visit selfgrowthnerds.com today to learn how. Finally, I want to thank my friend Etienne Galano for editing this. And I want to thank you, kind-hearted souls, for growing into your truest, most courageous selves every day and making this world a better, more beautiful place. My name is Marie, and I will talk to you next week.